Good morning, my friends. I hope all of you are having an awesome, fantastic day, and welcome to Epcot. It's 8 a.m. The parking lot is not full at all. I am here for a special media event to kick off the food and wine season, which I am very excited about. I have so much good food to try, so much good food to show you guys, and drinks, and fun. Let's not waste any time. I hope you guys are ready because I am. Let's go do this. Also, before I head in, I've heard a rumor that the Epcot monorail line will be returning this weekend. I believe on Sunday. I really hope that's true. I'm all checked in and ready to go. Of course, the first thing you must do when entering Epcot for a food festival, pick up your passport. This will show you where all the good stuff is, including games, merchandise, all the food and drinks. This year, the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival will last a very long time, all the way from July 15th through November 20th, 2021. I was just told we may have a few surprises throughout the day. I don't know what that means, but I'm excited to find out. Welcome to a, just a great spot, right? And you're standing really in the middle of the first phase of this really massive renovation of this park, you know, the largest renovation we've had in any of our parks. And, I hope you're, you're feeling the difference, right? If it's the first time you've been to Epcot in a long time, or, or you know, maybe you've been here a few times since we've, since we've opened the fountain and your, your new plaza area. But you know, just a little lighter, a little brighter, a little more welcoming, but yet still Epcot, right? And that was, the, that was the challenge of the design team as we looked at how do we bring Epcot into this time and, and set it up for the next 30 years, um, kind of distilling what, what Epcot DNA is in the architecture and how to celebrate it, right? And one, one of the things we look at hard is color, material, light, um, and light's super important. Shop is, is really all that. It's about celebrating that lightness, the brightness, but then the inspiration, that creativity that lives in all of us. Um, and who better uh, to kind of reflect that creativity than Mickey Mouse, right? So we, we, we are using Mickey um, as our global ambassador of creativity and letting artists, both internally and externally, interpret Mickey in different ways, as Mickey's been um, represented over the years. Um, and so we've got some great murals, and we've got some great sculptures, and um, it's just, just some great energy uh, around that character and around um, how he's inspired us all. Side of the uh, shop, we're bringing back Club Cool by, by Coca-Cola, right? That's a favorite, a fan favorite. Who doesn't yeah. love Club Cool? Um, and again, it's a great way to kind of share that connectivity about unique flavors and, and tastes from all over the globe, right? And, and to maybe you know get your brother to try something that is really terrible, um, but that's always a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, once you depart the friendship boats, our friends over at Walt Disney Imagineering have scored you a special sneak peek of the courtyard of Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. We got to talk briefly with Imagineer Scott, who was working on the entire park. He designed this park entrance, the plaza. He's also working on the creation shop and he basically told us how much color and light is going into the new renovations. And then, surprise, we get to go have a sneak peek inside of Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, the courtyard area. Can't film, can't show you guys, but how cool is that? Wow, it's not every day I get to walk around an empty world showcase here at Epcot. So we see, we kind of see like the rat nose all the way through the ear, all the way through the curly Q. Isn't that awesome? We see little Remy in his awesome little chef hat on this park bench. Everything from, you know, the, the, the hardscape chosen, the uh, lamp posts, the different sconces, the trees, everything is authentically Paris. And that's what we really wanted to keep inside of this, this courtyard as we transition because we're still inside Paris. We haven't yet got to Remy's Paris, but everything is made so that we're ultimately feeling like we are walking down the River Seine in Paris. Maybe this is a little bit darker, right? And as we transition into the middle where we would have more pathway, more people walking through, it gets a little bit lighter as if it was worn, right? From everybody. So these are just the little details to really make you feel like you're inside the film, inside the story and on a Paris street. All right. I'm about to enter Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, the courtyard area. Again, I cannot film, but I'll talk all about it in just a minute. Wow, okay, we just got to do that. That expansion is beautiful. Lots of just 
details and theming it's very pixar in there that ride is going to be so fun and so cute the crepery i can't wait to uh show you guys and i can't wait for you to see this new expansion to enter Morocco right now. All right, before we start eating, I have a few things I wanna show you guys, starting with merchandise and some interviews. Hi everybody, my name is Will. I'm a guest experience manager for Epcot Festivals. Welcome to 2021 Epcot International Food and Wine Festival presented by Corksicle. It's our 26th year of this event and we have all new collections to show you. So jumping right in, we have Celebrating Food and Wine. Look at the vibrant colors that we have that really captures the spirit of our event. Uh, interspersed throughout the designs on this one are the 11 host pavilions of World Showcase, which is such an important part of what we're doing here. And of course, you can't miss the silhouette of Spaceship Earth on this one. So, um, really nice, vibrant colors, exciting patterns. I mentioned earlier that this year's festival is presented by Corksicle, and our partners over there helped us develop two products. So we have a stemless glass and a double wall insulated canteen. In fact, all of the cork steel products are stainless steel, double wall insulated, so they'll help keep the cold over this cold. Really nice. Um, I know some of our collectors love the shakers. This one I'm particularly fond of because it's got the spaceship earth triangular tiles on the side of it. So, it's about 90 degrees here in Central Florida today. However, our event runs until November 20th, so a spirit jersey is a must have. Um, I particularly like the gold glitter throughout on the back of it. Maybe you'll be able to capture that later on. It's got celebrating food and wine on your back shoulders, so really festive. I bet we got a lot of pass holders tuned in today, so you're going to want to pay attention to this next line. It is um, featuring Chef Figment. He is dancing around and creating some cool stuff in the kitchen. Uh, take a look at the tempered glass cutting board. You're going to see a few throughout our products of functional kitchenware. And um, pretty sure we also have some pass holders that like the Magic Bands. This is limited edition of 2,700 pieces and it's got Chef Figment on uh, the back side of it right there. We were talking about our Disney Festival cookbook earlier. This has recipes from all six of the Disney festivals, the four out here at Walt Disney World and the two at Disneyland Resort. So you can really cook some tasty stuff, some of your favorites using that book. Rounding out the pass holder collection are some coasters and um, other items that I want to highlight is plastic tumbler. This is one of four. So we've got the tumblers interspersed throughout our collection. They're all pass holder exclusive ones. So this is just the first one. I'll show you the other three in just a few moments here. Another one of our new collections is Mickey and Minnie's Apple Orchard. This is, of course, inspired by the Appleseed Orchard, which is one of our global marketplaces in Canada Pavilion this year. And here's one of our other pass holder um, tumblers right here, reminding us that pass holders are sweet to the core. Everybody else, we got awesome to the core available for you, and Minnie is sweet as pie. She can be seen here baking an apple pie with uh, the goods that she harvested, and I really love this rolling pin. As you roll out your dough, you're going to get some surprises of Spaceship Earth, Mickey's silhouette, and apples. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. There's a spirit jersey in this collection. We just didn't have room for all of the excitement of that. But these beers would pair excellently with it. So you got kind of your wooden apple crate here, this very nice uh, sequined bow on it, and the event name on the side. We got a little bit of a Disney word for you here. We are celebrating Epic Curiosity with Remy, of course, our favorite little chef from Ratatouille, and uh, soon to be the newest star here in Epcot with his attraction in France Pavilion. So um, again, Corksicle helped us create a really nice uh, tumbler here. I'm going to be picking this one up for sure. And our scavenger hunt for anyone who's been to Epcot during a festival before and knows how that goes, you're searching for the 15 ingredients to make ratatouille spread throughout our park. And when you complete it, you'll get a selection of one of these fine prizes, which are little bowls themed to the four different collections I'm showing you today, actually. And um, continuing our uh, series of these tumblers just for pass holders. And there's that pass holder tag on there with Remy. Three of four, got one more to show you. And um, this last collection is pretty cool because it's the first time one of our Disney princesses has had her own collection as part of Food and Wine Festival. So this is Belle, Be Our Guest. 
We've got even more functional kitchenware here. So we've got a very nice silicone spatula back there. We've got a lumiere. Present, ready to present whatever you've cooked up in the kitchen. Maybe some gray stuff. I don't know if you have that recipe. <laughs> and then the enchanted objects are uh, serving true to their functions. So Cogsworth is an actual real kitchen timer. You can wind up and he'll uh, ding at the appropriate time. And then um, Chip the Cup is also a set of measuring cups. Oh, so this what? is, yeah, this is so neat. I may have to pick that up. <laughs> And there we are, four different measuring cups in that. And then when you're not using them, he's just sitting there being uh, as cute as can be on the countertop. Duty and Burke collectors, I bet we got a couple. We got one to show you today. There are three in total. This is the medium size, and we have to show you the surprise on the bottom. Wow. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. So there you go. This event runs through um, November the 20th. Um, we hope to see you here and uh, celebrate Epic Curiosity here at Epcot. Hi everyone, my name is Rayvon and I am the 2022-2023 Walt Disney World Ambassador. It has been a dream of mine since 2009 when the ambassador then uh, introduced me to this world of magic. Uh, I never knew that the magic of Disney existed outside of the parks until that very day. And so when he came to my school with Mickey Mouse, I, I could not believe that I was feeling what I felt outside of the parks. So since then, I knew that I was going to work for the Walt Disney Company and become the next Walt Disney World Ambassador. Um, I worked hard, I put in the time, I, I met with people, and um, I volunteered in the community, and I really made sure that uh, I, as a cast member, brought what Walt wanted from way back when, you know, 50 years here in the Magic Kingdom and even more uh, in Disneyland, I, I brought that to life now and just made it my own. So my biggest piece of advice to everyone is just make it your own. Have fun with it and just know that in your heart, if you have a dream, write that goal down and one day it's gonna come true. And I am so excited to talk to you all about the most magical celebration here at Walt Disney World. Uh, if you're into our nighttime spectaculars, we have two that will debut October 1st. The first one is gonna be Disney Enchantment, and that's gonna be at the Magic Kingdom Park. Our guests are going to be so immersed in front of Cinderella Castle and down Main Street USA for the first time ever. They are going to feel that magic and really know what it means to be here in the parks with lasers and pyrotechnics and all sorts of wonderful things. Here at Epcot, you will have an opportunity to see Harmonious, uh, one of the biggest celebrations and uh, nighttime spectaculars that uh, we, we have to offer. Uh, it's going to feature 12 different languages, 240 different artists singing some of your favorite Disney classics just in different languages, as I mentioned before. Uh, I think the thing that I'm most excited about are our characters. And Mickey and his friends are going to be decked out in their iridescent costumes. As you can see, iridescent is going to be the theme of our celebration. And so I'm excited for you all for the next 18 months to be able to see and get to feel that magic uh, that we are going to create here for the 50th. So for this year, we have the Epcot Jam and Chefs back. Um, they'll be here banging on their pots and pans and with their stoves and telling their awesome jokes. <laughs> we'll also have Carol Stein in the UK gazebo. Um, she's a, definitely a fan favorite. And then at America Gardens Theater, we have a lot of entertainment going on there. Seven days a week, we have Mariachi Cobre, and we have Voices of Liberty. And then Fridays through Mondays, we have America Gardens Bandstand, and that's our local bands that will be coming to entertain our guests, and they're fantastic. Uh, once we close the park, we'll have Epcot Forever for a limited time only. And that's your nostalgic walk down memory lane for Epcot. So if you're definitely uh, grown up in Epcot like I have, then you don't want to miss that. Hello, my name is Chef Courtney, and today we're welcoming you to Epcot International Food and Wine Festival, where we're going to have 20 global marketplaces with a few more opening in the fall, as well as seven new concepts for you guys to enjoy. So down here, we do have a lot of awesome, awesome, awesome uh, options for you guys today. Here we have the wild mushroom tart with cream fresh and gruyere. This is going to be at American Adventure Watanda Bistro. Another place that's going to be very beautiful to walk in with more of an hors d'oeuvre style. It's really amazing. Down here, we are going to be introducing your swanky sausage swine. This is going to be the porchetta, um, roasted porchetta with a pork fat rosemary potato with a lemon parsley verde sauce on it. So you got a little bit of every concept in there. It's really delicious. 
Here over at Noodle Exchange, we're going to be providing a Vietnamese inspired spicy beef pho with the milky mushrooms and Thai basil, which is one of my favorite places to go to. I love pho. <laughs> Right here we are going to be showcasing your um, stone-baked Moroccan bread. This is baked on stage for you to see. So it's really awesome. It's made daily and it's also made throughout the day. So it's one of those things where you come in, you're like, oh my goodness, they're doing it right now. Hey, let's go and try it. <laughs> With that, it has three different dipping sauces. But I would encourage children to try because this is one of those things where you eat with your hand. You know, it's a tad bit messy, but it's going to give them that option to try different herbs. And then the tomato and... Um, eggplant sauce right there. And who doesn't love hummus, right? Yes. It's fantastic. It's one of my favorite places to go to. Here we have the mango habanero uh, wings. Now, everyone's always kind of a little, a little nervous about it, but it is a very well-balanced, perfect sauce for you. So you got a little bit of sweetness, you have a little bit of heat as well. But don't be discouraged. We do have four other options of flavors for you to try. So check it out. And they also have a great pairing of beers and ciders there. And that location, air conditioned, right? <laughs> Coming October 1st, we do have Mac and Eats. Now, who doesn't love macaroni and cheese, right? We're going to give you four different options for you to go and try. This is literally one of my favorite. This is the truffle and brie fondue. Because I'm going to be tossing that coffee top of the It's going to have herb panko for a little bit of a crunch. And then it's going to have shaved truffles on top of it. It's one of my favorites as well as uh, they have a cowboy there. Come, a cowboy mac and cheese. You have to come back October 1st and try oh, it. Well. Like, it's delicious. <laughs> Here we're going to have a full lobster tail over at uh, Lobster Landing. This is going to be a New England lobster tail. It's going to be also have that creaminess and that uh, tomato-based lobster bisque on top of it. I mean, delicious. It really is. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. And for your dessert, at least one of your desserts, because you're going to have so many different options, it's going to be the candy jar donut at the donut box. It's going to be a donut dipped in chocolate, sprinkled with some of those M&M's, Twix, and Snickers. These are all of my favorite candies that I grew up having, and I definitely feel like you guys are going to enjoy it. They do have other ones that are going to be displayed and showcased throughout the festival. So this may be just the, the one, but there's going to be so many different options for you. Good morning, I am Rick DeSico, and I'm the proprietor of festivals here at Epcot. We're gonna take you through a little bit of this year's Food and Wine Festival. Really excited about it because we got so much new stuff, you can't come just once. So, right over here, at the end of the table, this is our allspice cider from Three Daughters. We're serving that at the Refreshment Outpost. That's gonna pair up really well with our spicy Gathiri dish. Can't miss that one. In Morocco, brand new this year, is Tangerine Cafe Flavors of the Medina. So we've got kebabs in there, chicken, beef, and lamb. The lamb is my favorite. And we're pairing that up with, right here, we've got fresh squeezed orange juice. We've also got fresh squeezed blood orange juice, the end of the table. And in that location, a custom cider flight. There's a turmeric ginger cider, there's a fig cider, and an allspice cider, plus a, um, Big cocktail as well. So really a location you do not want to miss. There is so much going on. Uh, right here in American Adventure, brand new concept as well, the Rotunda Bistro. That's in the American Adventure Rotunda. So that is an art gallery experience. We've got a mushroom tart. We've got a crab and avocado parfait and a shrimp cocktail. And what better for your art gallery opening than some bubbles. We've got Domaine Carneros, sparkling rosé. It is a great way to beat the heat. Yes. Nice and dry rosé there. This is my favorite thing this year. Uh, you heard it here. This is the from the Swanky Saucy Swine. This is all about the pig. So at this location, we've got house-made porchetta. We've got a um, pimento cheese with uh, pork rinds. And we've got soy glazed uh, ribs. But this guy right here is the star of the show in my opinion. And this is our Bloody Mary. It's a spicy Bloody Mary finished with Woodford Reserve bourbon. It's uh, garnished around the rim with barbecue spices, served in this mason jar, and served with a piece of candied bacon. Oh my goodness. Yes. That's just crazy. And it's so good, <laughs> you got to have that one. The Greece uh, location is back this year after a few years off. And this is our Greek wine flight. And you're going to want to pair that up with our griddled cheese finished with honey and pistachios. It's just a can't-miss item. Flavors from Fire over in Future World. 
is uh, hosted by ESPN uh, NFL, and we're serving this Four Virtues Zinfandel. This is finished in bourbon barrels. It gives it a really unique flavor, and that's going to pair up with our charred chimichurri skirt steak dish that is just unbelievable. And another new concept, the noodle exchange. So if you like noodles, this is the place for you. We've got all different noodle bowls and we have worked with Playa Linda uh, Brewing to come up with the green tea beer to pair up with those noodles. I highly recommend with our uh, spicy shrimp noodle bowl, green tea beer, great way to cool off. And then last but not least, over on the, on the food table, you'll see the wings, but you want to go to Brewing yes. at Odyssey. And this is all about the different wings. We've got five flavors from sweet to heat, and then uh, beer and cider. So three draft beers, three draft ciders. And throughout the festival, we will have a rotation of local canned beers. We've got some really nice limited run items, and they will change throughout the festival. There'll be about 30 to 40 different beers offered throughout the festival we're doing six of those at a time so come on out and enjoy the festival this year it is better than ever and it is longer than ever can't wait ends on november 20th i really enjoy doing these events and getting the opportunity to interview the people who are in charge and behind the scenes of creating all of these amazing food items and drink items and entertainment like this year's festival is the longest festival ever that has ever been done this is just the biggest food and wine festival that has ever been here at Epcot and I'm excited to experience it today. All right, let's go try some food now. I made sure I got a little bit of everything to try. I got some good stuff. To start with, I got the traditional spicy Vietnamese beef pho and the pho is from the noodle exchange. Next up, I have the roasted porchetta with pork fat, roasted rosemary potatoes, and a lemon parsley salsa verde. Also, the pork is from the swanky saucy swine. And for my two drinks, I got a Powerade. Plus, everybody has been saying how good this bourbon Bloody Mary is with reserved bourbon whiskey from the swanky saucy swine. And for dessert, from the donut box, I got the candy jar donut with M&M, Snickers, and Twix. I just finished up with the event just finished up with my food and I wanted to give you guys my quick review on the few items that I had. Starting off with that roasted porchetta. That was amazing. I love that dish. The pork was just nice and tender and juicy, had a ton of flavor. The roasted potatoes were just as good. I highly suggest that dish and that was actually my favorite dish out of the few items that I did have. Next up, I wanna talk about the traditional spicy Vietnamese beef pho. I love pho. I'm so glad there's a booth here at Epcot that has ramen and pho, all that good stuff because I eat that so much in my everyday life. Now, it is Florida. It is always hot here, so I don't know how well some of you may do having pho or ramen in 100 degree weather, but it's a great option and I'm so glad it's here for a long time. But I've never been a fan of Bloody Marys. I never have but everybody in that event was saying I had to try the Bourbon Bloody Mary with reserve bourbon whiskey. The whiskey was really, really, really good. But I did really enjoy that and I may get it again just because of that whiskey. It was really good. For dessert, I had the candy jar donut with M&M, Snickers, and Twix from the donut box. I enjoyed it. It was really good. Some of my favorite candy was on that donut, however, I felt like it was too much, it was too sweet. So if you have that issue with not liking overpowering sweetness, I probably would stay away from that item, but it is really good. It looks good on camera, it looks great in photos. However, I just thought it was really, really sweet. Disney did provide a gift card for me to go around the world showcase and try some more food and drink items from food and wine. So let's go do that. Disney also gifted me a food and wine goodie bag with a lot in there. I can't wait to go through that later. And I know the first place I'm going to, the brand new food booth for this year, Brew Wing. One thing I would like to talk about when you guys come to Epcot to do these food festivals, I highly recommend to pick up one of these free mini Disney gift cards because you can wear it on your wrist so you don't lose it. It's also just a really, I guess, funner way and more efficient way to track your spending here at Epcot because 
it does get pretty pricey but this way just say you put a hundred dollars on it well you have a hundred dollars to do whatever you want or buy whatever you want i don't know it just makes my day a little more easier for me also all you need to get one of these is a 15 dollars minimum to put on the gift card heading inside the odyssey building to experience brewing which is a brand new food booth i think i'm going to try the mango habanero sauce I've heard really good things about it, but it is spicy, but they have some medium and mild options. And of course, some beer to pair it with. I think I'm going to do the cider flight so I can try a little bit of everything, but that watermelon dragon fruit session sour sounds pretty good. Oh yes, look at this. We have the cider flight and our wings. And make sure you guys ask for ranch or blue cheese because if you don't, they will not give it to you. I just finished up my wings and my cider flight and boy oh boy, I'm pretty impressed. Especially with the wings. They were cooked really, really well. Very impressed by that. So the flavor I got, initially when you first eat it, it's not as spicy as I thought they were going to be. However, my lips right now are burning. But that's okay because I have a really good cider flight. I loved every single cider I had. However, I really enjoyed the apple lantern roasted pumpkin, followed by the bold rock honey crisp hard cider, and then finally the magpie hard cider. All in all, all three flavors, really good. I think the wings and cider work really well together, but if you don't like cider, they also have a beer flight that would pair really well with the wings. I really do enjoy how Disney now has more places to eat indoors so you can get plenty of air conditioning. I'm now checking out some more exclusive food and wine merchandise, but this year they have some La Keva del Tequila merch. Check out this hat for $24.99. Also this woman's t-shirt, you complete me. Speaking of the avocado margarita, that shirt is $29.99. I like this one, also $24.99. They also have like a margarita glass. Here's a different one. I also really like this shirt. And then you check out the front. Look at that. I think I'm going to buy it. They even have a shot glass. Another t-shirt, Flight Crew. I like this, $24.99. And the rest, I pretty much showed you already. Michael does Disney. What's up? How's your day going so far? So far, so good. Can't complain, happy to be here. What did you just have? I had a donut and a lamb chop, which was like a really interesting combination to have at 11 a.m., so. I just had beer and wings, so. We got this, this is what, we, this is what we're doing. Oh so. yes, good to see you, my man. You too. At one of my all-time favorite food booths for food and wine, Hawaii, to get the teriyaki glaze spam hash. I get it every single year. Here is my spam hash, my first one of the season. The spam hash is truly one of the only select few dishes that taste the same year after year after year. I truly enjoy the spam hash, I highly recommend. Next up, I'm here at one of the brand new food booths, the Noodle Exchange, which I've been really excited about. Hello! <laughs> Look at this, a world full of noodles. Today, hundreds of different kinds of noodles are cooked in millions of kitchens around the world in a global exchange of taste and tradition. I'm going to skip this one just for today because I've already tried the traditional spicy Vietnamese beef pho, but look at the menu. They have udon, lots of different options. I think this is going to be my last food booth of the day, which brings us here to Earth Eats to try the Impossible Burger Slider. I get this every single year. I love it, it's really good. They also have a impossible three bean chili. Here's a fun fact over here. Try the official plant-based burger of Walt Disney World at Earth Eats. Impossible Burger is meaty and delicious and just so happens to be made from plants. Choosing Impossible is one of the tastiest ways you can help protect the planet. Look at this. This is how much water you'll save if you and your family ate an Impossible Burger instead of a beef burger once a week for a year. Very interesting. Here's my impossible burger slider. It looks so good. Well, I just finished up with my impossible burger slider. It was really good. That's kind of another dish year after year that will always taste the same. However, when I order a impossible burger elsewhere, 
across Walt Disney World's property, I feel like it doesn't taste the same. Like it kind of does, but it doesn't. But why I like it here at Food and Wine, it always comes so seasoned. And I like a lot of seasoning on stuff. I like taste, I like flavor. And that's what I get with this slider. It's really good. Yeah, it's different than a regular beef slider, but not that different. I highly suggest this. I'm glad I got it once again. Man, what a good day to eat some food. <laughs> Disney just confirmed this Sunday the Epcot monorail line will return. I'm excited about that. I've missed the Epcot monorail. Also, it looks like the Flower and Garden Festival flower bed is staying at least for now another thing that i really love about the epcot food festivals not only for their food and merchandise but they also have some really cool photo opportunities throughout the park i'm really glad to hear the new creation shop is opening by the end of this summer like that's pretty soon as you see here disney has this side blocked off for some construction also the playground is back fully open. On the way out, I'm stopping by the donut box. I've already had the candy jar donut. They also have a sriracha glazed donut and a crispy chicken on sriracha glazed donut and chef's donuts of the day. I really want to try this crispy chicken sriracha glazed donut. However, I just do not have any more room in my stomach. They also have a Quirksicle Classic Tumbler for $32 as you see here with the food and wine logo on there. I think I'm gonna save this for the next time. All right, my friends, that's gonna do it for today's video. I'm doing the outro in front of the monorail station because I'm so excited. It's coming back this Sunday. I hope that's true, but Disney did confirm it's coming back. Let's talk about our day. First of all, thank you so much, Disney, for having me out. I truly do enjoy doing these events to just get a little more coverage to show you guys, especially on opening day. Every single food and drink item that I had today was pretty good. I enjoyed every single one of them. We still have so much to try, so much drinks to try, so much food, treats, desserts, so, so much. There's no way you can do food and wine in just one day. There's just way too much food and drinks and just options. So you definitely need to break it up so you can enjoy it a little bit more that way you're not just rushing from food booth to food booth my highlight though i'm not gonna lie was getting to go behind the construction wall to check out the courtyard in front of remy's ratatouille adventure i can't wait to ride that attraction i can't wait for you guys to see it i can't wait for me to show you guys but that is all that i have for you guys today i'm gonna head home and get this video up for you guys to enjoy Thank you so much for watching. Please remember, it's nice to be nice on YouTube. I'll see you in the next video. Prince Charming, out. I ain't feeling lonely And I've only made it start to end the ride They need to slowly Over those gonna lift me up this time You were the only One who got me tripping up inside All the ones you told me